It is the year 2032, seven years after the second Great Kanto earthquake split Tokyo in two. Mega Tokyo was just beginning to finish recovering from the earthquake, largely thanks to the development of boomers, which are highly advanced androids that usually take the form of human beings. The boomers are produced by a massive corporation known as Genom, which seem to have much of the world's technology and wealth at its grasp, and appear to have a secret goal to take over the world, because of course it would. Even though boomers are meant to help mankind, they tend to be placed in the hands of criminals to commit crimes. The AD police is usually dispatched to deal with them, but at times they find themselves unable to handle the criminals on their own. And thus we are introduced to the Night Sabers, four young women who are mercenaries equipped with high-tech suits of armor that are more than a match for boomers. The four women are Pris Asagiri, a hard-headed girl who lives a double life of a singing idol, Lina Yamazaki, a lively woman who works as an aerobics instructor, Nene Romonoba, a bubbly pink-haired girl who is a super hacker and serves as a team's mole in the 80 police, and Celia Stingray, the oldest of the four who serves as the leader and also has a younger brother named Maki who acts as a team's mechanic. Together they take on various boomer-related jobs to not only make money, but to also protect the city from the threats of Genon and criminals alike and restore peace. Bubblegum Crisis was an OVA series that lasted for about four years and was a joint effort between three companies, Umex, Artmic, and AIC. While the series had many names directing various episodes, Katsuhito Akiyama served as the chief director, and he actually worked on the original Thundercats cartoon as an animator, which is pretty cool. Now a lot of people might be asking, why is it called Bubblegum Crisis? Well, I'm not entirely sure myself, but I think it's more of a metaphor of how the society within the series is on the peak of collapsing, kind of like how a bubble from bubblegum eventually explodes when it gets too big. What's even more interesting is that this series was made during the peak and eventual burst of Japan's bubble economy, a bizarre coincidence if I ever saw one. The OVA takes heavy inspiration from various American sci-fi and action movies at the time, particularly Blade Runner and Streets of Fire. The setting is that of a future dystopia where even though the technology is far more advanced than what we have now, it has not necessarily made people's lives better, and in some ways have actually made them worse considering many of the boomers go berserk and cause destruction in the city. The themes of Bubblegum Crisis appears to be about greed and corruption and how it is dangerous to let a single entity, in this case Genom, to control much of the world's wealth and technology. In terms of execution, I think Bubblegum Crisis presents its ideas fairly well. However, I have issues with both the narrative and characters. While there does appear to be a coherent story within Bubblegum Crisis, because of the nature of how the show ended, I find that it never got to reach its full potential, and I will talk about the circumstances regarding how the series ended in a little bit. Now, if there is one aspect of the OVA that I think really could have been improved, it's definitely the characters. I'm not saying they are bad characters, I actually thought the main four women were rather enjoyable in their own ways, but we barely get to know anything about them over the course of the eight episodes. Sure, we get to know much about their personality traits. Pris is a short-tempered woman who distrusts authority, Lena is outgoing and a massive team player, Celia is calm and collected, and Nene is bubbly and naive. But they never get to develop any further than that. We don't even get any kind of origin story or background information on them, with the sole exception being Celia, who had a father that actually worked with Genom before he ended up getting killed, making her the only one with a legitimate axe to grind against the corporation. As for the other three, well, their reasons for joining the Night Sabers remain mostly a mystery, which is a real shame. For side characters, we have Celia's younger brother, Mackie, a computer whiz who serves as the team's mechanic. He also tends to be perverted towards his team members, which is... something, I suppose. Leon is a member of the 80 police, who has a massive crush on Pris. While he has the facade of a ladies' man, deep down he does care for the people and does whatever it takes to stop criminals from destroying the city. The villains in the OVA are pretty much what you expect for a series like this, and they tend to range from being super evil like Largo, to being more tragic like Sylvie. Now you might be wondering at this point, the show sounds really damn good and entertaining to watch. So how come the series never reached its full potential? 
Well, the answer is simple. The OVA got cancelled before it ever got to finish. You see, Umix and Artmic, who co-owned the rights to the series, had legal problems that ultimately caused them to split after the completion of Episode 8, causing the series to end prematurely. This does hurt the story quite a lot, as a lot of questions regarding the characters and setting have been left unanswered, and all we have left now is speculation. But Artmic wasn't ready to give up on the series, and decided to make a sequel called Bubblegum Crash, which was basically a short version of how Crisis would have ended. But Umix caught wind of this and ended up suing Artmic, causing the franchise to be tied up in legal issues for many years until both companies went belly up by the end of the decade. And at that point, AIC, the third company that co-produced the original series, was working on a remake in hopes to build a void that was left after the original series got canned. Whew, what a mouthful. Now, despite the premature ending and the legal issues that would plague the series for several years, I don't think it ultimately hurts Bubblegum Crisis' legacy. Yeah, the fact the series never properly finished does hurt, but I still enjoyed the 8 episodes that were produced. The themes and settings were interesting and the characters were likable. Had the story been complete and the characters been fleshed out a little more, I would say that Bubblegum Crisis would be an outstanding series, but as it stands, it's still an enjoyable ride, but it had the potential to be even better. Visually, Bubblegum Crisis has aged quite well. The animation is fluent, the battles are dynamic, and the dystopian setting looks very dark and bleak, which is what you come to expect for an anime in the cyberpunk genre. The character designs were done by Kenichi Sonoda, who previously worked on Golf Force and would go on to work on Gainax's Otaku no Video. The mechanical designs were done by the legendary Masami Obari, who also happened to direct two of my favorite episodes in the whole series. Obari is just a talented individual, who not only worked on Bubblegum Crisis, but also worked on Dankuga, Dankuga Nova, Tekaman Blade, Ray Earth, Firebird, the Fatal Fury films, and several entries in the Super Robot Wars franchise. What a hell of a resume. The hard suits used by the Night Sabers all look really cool, with Press and Nene suits being my personal favorites, and I also really dig the designs of the upgraded suits the team gets later on. The Boomers are very intimidating machines. They are essentially Terminators on steroids, and the few mechs that appear in the series are pretty badass in their own right. All in all, the presentation is definitely the biggest highlight from the OVA, and I can't get enough of it. The music is absolutely fantastic. Honestly, one of the best OSTs I've ever heard for an anime. From the iconic Kanyoa Hurricane performed by Princess Seiyu, Kinuko Umori, to various insert songs like Mr. Dandy, Mad Machine, Say Yes, just a fantastic soundtrack overall. The dub does feature English versions of the songs, and while they sound perfectly fine to me, I don't think they sound as good as the Japanese versions. Regardless, I highly recommend listening to the OST. It's fucking awesome. The Japanese version had solid voice work all around. Chris is voiced by Japanese rock star Kinuko Umori. As I said before, she also performs some of the songs in the series. For somebody who is primarily a singer, I thought she had a brilliant performance as Pris, and managed to capture her personality perfectly. Celia is voiced by Yoshiko Sakakibara, who is primarily known for her role as Haman in Zeta and Double Zeta. Lina is voiced by Michie Tomizawa, who would go on to voice Sailor Mars in Sailor Moon, as well as Sumire Kanzaki in Sakura Wars. We also have Toshio Furukawa as Leon, Nozomu Sasaki as Maki, Koichi Madera as Fargo, and the Red Comet himself, Shuichi Ikeda, in the role of the antagonist Mason. The English dub by Animego is fairly old, and to be honest, it's not really that good. But hey, it's still an option for those who are not big into subs. What happened to Bubblegum Crisis in the end was quite tragic. Had the legal issues between Artmic and Umic resolved, and the OVA was able to reach its full potential, I would probably consider it a masterpiece. Even though the series was left incomplete, I still find myself able to enjoy the 8 episodes that were offered, 
and I ultimately have to commend all three companies for what they were able to accomplish here. They took concepts and ideas from Blade Runner, a highly influential film in its own right, and made something that they could call their own. And to this day, many anime fans consider the series a cult classic, and is widely regarded as one of the best examples of cyberpunk anime out there. With all of this said, I think Bubblegum Crisis is definitely worth checking out. Yeah, the characters aren't the most fleshed out bunch in the world, and the ending is rather abrupt due to the whole fiasco. But it still had very interesting themes, the visuals are stellar, the action is intense, and the music is amazing. It's not a perfect series, but hey, no anime truly is. Final score, 8 out of 10.